We're going to kick things off here in the Azure AI Foundry portal. Right now I am in the section where you can create agents and you can access that by going to build and customize followed by agents. Once you're in here, you can minimize the menu on the left hand side to give yourself more space. The first thing you'll do is select new agent. Once you've selected new agent, you're going to get a setup on the right hand side of the screen. And within here, an agent ID will be automatically created for your agent. The first thing you'll need to do is provide a name for this agent. So I'm just gonna call mine demo agent. And then after that, you'll need to select a model deployment for your agent as well. I already have GPT 4.0 deployed for my project. However, if there were more models that have been deployed for this project, they will be available within the dropdown. You also have the option at this step to create a new deployment and you can choose to do so from either a base model or a fine tune model. If you select base model, it'll give you the catalog of models that we have within our model catalog. And then just below, we're going to give instructions to our agent. The instructions, also sometimes known as the system prompt for the agent, defines the agent's behavior. It also defines the tasks that it's capable of doing. If there's any special instructions with regards to the tone or the engagement style, that's what you're going to want to define here. In this example, I'll say that the you're a surfer who recommends the best places to surf in California. Therefore, by defining this, this agent should, in theory, only provide advice around surfing in California. And we'll spice things up a bit and we'll say that you have a surfer personality. And I'll make it even more specific. You have a stereotypical surfer personality. All right, so down below, you can also define the agent description as well. This does not impact your agent behavior in any way, but it is helpful information for you if you have multiple agents created in your project. You can also define some knowledge for your agent, which we'll take a look at in a second here. And there's different ways that you can provide knowledge, be it file search, internet, if you want to connect it to data. And then in addition to that, we also have actions that you can also add. And this is going to enable the agent to perform tasks as well. If you want to connect this agent to any other agents, it more or less creates a multi-agent workflow. Then you can connect that agent here to other agents. And then we also have some model settings as well. And for the temperature, this is going to control the randomness, which impacts the output or the generated responses from the agent itself. So as mentioned here, if you lower that temperature, it'll have more repetitive and, and deterministic responses. But if you were to increase that, then you're going to have more unexpected or creative responses. And so you can play with this so you can see how that impacts your agent. And then there's the top P. It's going to be similar to controlling the randomness, but instead it's going to use a different method. And so if you lower that top P, it'll just narrow the model's token selection to likelier tokens, whereas the opposite, which would be increasing it, it'll let the model choose from tokens with both the high and low likelihood. So you can give either parameter a try here and just to see how that impacts your agent. You also have the option to provide voice with your agent as well, and this will require additional setup. We're not going to explore that in this video, but I at least want you to know that it is available. So now that we have the agent created, do note that the agent settings do get automatically saved. And then from here, the next thing that we can do is actually try this agent out in the playground. So we'll select try in playground, and that then brings us to the agent playground. Within here, you can start having conversations with the agent. Within this text box, this is where I would submit my prompt to the agent. So let's say I'm in Malibu, where should I surf? And in submitting that to the agent, we'll see what it responds with. 
All right. So I can see here that we do have that personality of the surfer that we've defined in the instructions for the agent. And it says, oh, dude, you're in Malibu. That's like surf heaven, my friend. The vibes there are legendary. And here's where you got to paddle out. So from there, I do get recommendations. And as a Californian, I can definitely say these locations are actually, in fact, real. Point Doom happens to be actually my most favorite place to go if you ever happen to be in California and going to the beach. And just below that, beyond getting the actual output from the agent, we can also see how long it took to generate that response. And so in this case, it took three seconds. The next thing that we have, which is the 361T, that's going to be the amount of tokens. And so the input tokens is going to be 82 tokens, and then the output is going to be 279 tokens. That brings us to a total of 361 tokens. Do keep in mind that this will impact your, your rate limits that you have for the model itself. Then we have the AI quality. These are going to be two evaluators that we provide here within the agent playground. And these evaluators are going to assess for the quality of the output from the model. The first one is going to be the intent resolution, which is going to be associated with how the model is able to generate an output based on the intention of the prompt that was submitted. And so the highest that you can get for intent would be a five. And it seems here we get a five out of five. The second is going to be the task adherence, which is essentially how has the model adhered to whatever the task at hand is. And the task in my case is going to be recommending places to surf in Malibu. And so the assessment that we have here is going to be a five. Now you may be wondering, well, what's powering this evaluation that's happening in the background? And it's actually an AI assisted evaluation. And this AI assisted evaluation just as you may have guessed, we're leveraging a large language model to do the evaluation. Now from here, I can also modify anything that I've set up beforehand. So like the instructions, if I wanted to provide more instructions for the agent, I can do so here as well. So I mentioned before that we can also provide some knowledge to our agent. And within this file, I have a curated list of popular surf spots across California, and it's organized by region as well as the skill level. I have Northern California followed by Central California and then Southern California as well. And you'll notice that the structure of the data is consistent. This is going to be genuinely helpful for the model as it's going through the information that's going to be in this file. So do keep that in mind for any files that you are providing your agents. If you have structured data, that's going to be a bonus. Back here within the Azure AI Foundry portal to provide that knowledge to our agent, what we're going to do is select add next to the knowledge section. And within here, we'll have the add knowledge screen. This screen provides a list of the data sources that are going to be supported with creating agents. You can provide files, you can do an Azure AI search. There is Microsoft Fabric, SharePoint, grounding with Bing search if you want to use the internet, as well as with grounding with Bing custom as well. There's also a trip advisor that you can add if you're doing anything around any sort of travel advice. And then there's Morningstar if you want to do any sort of research, um, research kind of knowledge for your agent. What we're going to do is use the files, which is considered the file search tool. These are tools that your agent have access to you using. And so with using the files option, you're going to upload the local files. So in terms of how the file search tool works, what it does is it parses and chunks documents and it creates vector embeddings and stores them in a vector store. The vector store is a specialized database that holds these embeddings and it enables both keyword and semantic searches. So therefore, when let's say you, for example, ask a question or any user asks a question of your agent, the agent can quickly retrieve relevant information from the stored documents. And that just helps improve the accuracy and the relevance of its responses. So in setting up the knowledge for the agent to use files, what we're going to do is create the vector store. If you have a vector store already created within your project, it will display within the dropdown for vector stores. However, if you do not have any vector stores created, then you can create a brand new one. The default name does get populated, but you can modify that to whatever you prefer it to be. 
And then on the right hand side, we're going to add the files themselves. And so I only have one file, so I would select that to upload. As for the status itself, right now you'll notice that it says not started. What that means is that this document has not been processed yet. It's been uploaded, but it hasn't been processed. So once we select upload and save, all right, great. So that's been uploaded now. And the next thing that we need to do is select this again for upload and save, and then that'll exit out of there. So back here in the agent playground, I've created a brand new thread and you can do so by selecting new thread. This creates a new conversation more or less for the agent. Within the chat box, if you recall from the document, we have different beaches recommended based by region as well as skill set, information about the waves as well. I'm going to keep things consistent down in Southern California and I'm going to ask for a recommendation for Malibu. So with that said, I'm going to submit to the agent, I'm a beginner surfer, recommend a spot in Southern California. And let's just see what happens. So it does search the files, which is great. And if I scroll up here, following along with my surfer talk, he says, yo dude, if you're paddling into the surf life, Southern California, got some killer spots for you. So it does recommend Surf Rider Beach in Malibu. And it also says if I want vibes that cover all skill levels, then we can head to Huntington Beach instead. And what you're going to notice here is that we have something different in the output this time. We're going to have a reference to the file itself. So if you hover over it, it'll show you the markdown file in this case that it referenced. And that happens for both of the references that were made in the output. And so we can see here, we have the first reference after bro, the second one after around. And so that's the reference that we have there. And then down below, similar metrics from before that we got, we have the time to completion, the tokens that were used, the AI quality, as we can see, this is actually worse. <laughs> so there are some improvements that we could make to the instructions, for example, to help with this. But in this case, we have a three for task adherence and a four for the intent resolution. And then we have tools that were used. We have one tool, which in this case is going to be the file tool. If you were to select on the thread logs, what this is going to do is provide more information about this thread itself that was created. So not only do we have the thread name and the run, we can also see the steps of the run as well. So we had a tool call that occurred. We had the tool itself that was used, which is the file search. And then for the next run step, we have the message that was created. Over on the right-hand side here in the input and output, we can see the role and the content itself. So the role being the user who is me and the content that came from me, which is the prompt that I submitted. And then we get the output as well from the model, or in this case, the role of the assistant. There's some metadata that we can take a look at as well. And this may be necessary for whatever you're creating or if you're doing any debugging, so on and so forth. And you may find some very helpful information that's happening in here. Let's say something did not succeed, for example, we can see that for this particular run for this thread, we would be notified that this was not successful, but in this case it was successful. And then finally we have the evaluations that I went over earlier. And so I can see here for the intent, for the quality, we got a four out of five. For the task adherence, we got a three out of five. Now, if it's the case that you want to actually use more than just the task adherence and the intent resolution evaluators, here within this metrics section, you can select that. And then within AI quality, you have the option to select some of the other evaluators that we have available, such as coherence and fluency and relevance. And then we also have some risk and safety ones available as well. If you were to check that box, you would see the ones that we have available, which is self-harm, hate and unfairness, violence, sexual. You can also apply indirect attacks and code vulnerability as well. But overall, this is just the beginning of creating agents. Should you decide you want to move forward with using a code first approach from here, you would select view code and then you will be able to select the language of your choice. 
either Python, C Sharp, or JavaScript. We also provide the code here on screen as well with the ability to authenticate using Enter ID. In addition to that, you can select Open in VS Code, which will open up Visual Studio Code in the browser, and it'll create a workspace for you with the code that's here on the screen. The final thing I'll point out is that should you decide you'd like to delete your agent, what you will need to do is go to the left menu within Build and Customize and select Agents. That'll bring you to the list of all your agents that you have available. You can then select the agent itself, followed by Delete. And when you select Delete, you'll confirm whether you'd like to delete the agent. So in my case, I'd like to delete this agent. I'll select Yes. And then from there, you'll have a notification that the agent's been successfully deleted and it'll no longer appear in your list of agents. Thank you.